Hi, I'm Susan Ying, Senior VP of Global Operations of Ampere. Ampere is an electric aircraft company, and uh, we're based in Los Angeles, and we were founded in 2016. Our mission is to be the most trusted developer of practical, compelling, and electric aircraft. And our vision is to have a sustainable aviation that will be with uh, electric airplanes that's flying cleaner, quieter, and more affordable. We're taking a very pragmatic approach. So rather than um, going in it as building exact, a, a complete clean sheet design of aircraft, we're starting from the core of the aircraft, in this case, the propulsion system. So we're developing a hybrid electric airplane, such as the one that's behind me. Um, and with a hybrid electric airplane, you can uh, reduce the risk of the range, for example, because of the battery energy density right now is not, su is not supporting a full electric airplane design. So as an example, a hybrid electric airplane like this, we came here from California all the way to Oshkosh, 1,880 miles and we're on one charge. And so we're independent of the charging infrastructure because there's nowhere to charge between California and here. And so that's the risk of uh, charging and infrastructure. Another one is that with hybrid electric airplane, we're reducing the risk of regulatory changes because a lot of these new technologies, the standards for evaluation for the certification do not exist yet. And so we, uh, our pragmatic approach is such that we can take the time to develop these new standards together with the regulators such as FAA and EASA. For this aircraft behind me, which is a hybrid electric vehicle, what we did was uh, using the very basic KISS principle, keep it simple and safe. So in this principle, we basically kept the, the rear engine as the combustion engine, and the front engine we swap out as the electric engine. And so architecture is what we call an independent parallel architecture. What the two engines are doing are totally independent of each other, so namely, the rear engine is operating on its own and it's not, it's not charging the battery for the front engine. We're getting the charge of the front engine only by charging from the ground infrastructure. Okay. And that charge is stored in the battery down in the bay down below there. So in this aircraft, if you zoom in a little closer, you can see in that engine bay, the front engine bay, it's mostly empty because the electric engine takes so little room comparing to the original piece of metal, the Lycoming engine in there, that we have to put extra weight, the ballast in the front. So it's definitely not an uh, optimized aircraft design. So if we make this a brand new design of an airplane, we obviously would take care of that void or that space to make it more optimized. The first launch product we have is an Eco Caravan. And in the Eco Caravan, the architecture we have is what we call an uh, integrated parallel architecture. As we know, that eco caravan or caravan has only one prop. So both the combustion engine and the electric engine operate on the same shaft. We have just announced an exclusive partnership for our eco caravan's uh, combustion engine, and that is with the red engine from Germany. That engine is a com uh, compression ignition engine and it has a very good specific fuel consumption ratio comparing to the original engine of the caravan, which is a PT6-27 or-34. And so the specific fuel consumption of that aircraft, of the engine is good. And coupled with our electric engine driving the same shaft, we can save the fuel from anywhere between 50 to 70 percent. And so what that means is that the fuel consumption is drastically reduced as well as the emission. And on top of that, because it's a SAF compatible engine, namely we can put sustainable aviation fuel in that engine, and so we can make it almost 100% emission free. So for the Eco Caravan, what we have, as I mentioned, is an integrated architecture. So in the integrated architecture, they both work together to generate the overall power. But the customer has the choice of doing the charge in flight versus on the ground. So for example, for some of our uh, customers, uh, for example, they would have to fly in the highlands and islands where there are lots of island hopping. And in hopping the islands, very often the turnaround time is 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes. 
So you're not going to have the chance to totally charge your battery in that 10 minutes. So what we have is a design such that allowed the operator to operate in such kind of mission. Namely, you hop a few times and then you go back to your base, base airport to do the charging over there. And also, we allow you to do it totally in the, in the air where you can do the charging using the combustion engine. Wow. Obviously, when you do it that way, you won't get the same fuel savings as if you do the charging on the ground. But it allows you to overcome the risk from the infrastructure building in those operations. So the Eco Order is normally powered by PT6-27-34 as well. So one, uh, one operation could be that we just do a drop-in drop in, uh, plug into the, uh, from the caravan into the Otter. Well, another one is that we have another parallel operation, namely we have a pod uh, of the electric engine together with the battery in the same pod that's on the wing in addition to the combustion engine. So that will be a distributed electric propulsion on the wing. Uh, so that is an independent parallel back to the same kind of architecture as this airplane. Because of the difference of the architect system architecture, the configuration of the airplane will be different. So in one case, you will have a drag and drop that will make it the same twin engine aircraft. But in another case, where you will have the engine pod, the electric engine pod on the wing, that would make it sort of quad engine. However, similar to the Eco Caravan, when we have two, basically two engines on the same shaft, it's actually a 1.5 engine aircraft. It's not just a single engine aircraft, because when you have one failure, you still have the other one that can take you safely to the next de destination. So in terms of developing these airplanes, uh, such as in our prototype as well as in our product, we work with the whole ecosystem. As you know, the electric airplane, ultimately all electric airplane, will require the infrastructure to change. So we work, for example, with Black and Beach, uh, who is an infrastructure uh, charge point builder for, uh, um, for example, for the uh, Tesla in the early days. And so we want to work with them to electrify or to build the infrastructure for airports as the future airport will become possibly the energy hubs for all these um, big airplanes, electric airplanes. And so that's one uh, partner. And we also work with other partners such as the airline partners because we want to better understand the operations that will drive the requirements for the airplanes. Just like I mentioned earlier, on the island hopping because you won't have all the charge infrastructure at the smaller islands. So we want to come up with the requirements for all the charging infrastructure or for the airplane operation. Yes, we have uh, quite a few uh, customers getting in line. Um, we just announced that we had the wingtips order last week and you will see more of those in the coming days. We're one year into the three years of the supplemental type certificate. So that means by 2024-ish, mid-2024, we should be able to get our supplemental type certificate for the Eco Caravan, and we should be able to see those in operation in some of those regional air, uh, airports. Well, the biggest benefit for the airline is definitely in terms of the operational cost, because the fuel cost is definitely one of the biggest costs, other than crew cost, to, uh, to operate these airplanes. And of course, as uh, uh, aviation enthusiasts, we also don't want to uh, harm any more our atmosphere because aviation in general put out about 900 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. And we definitely want to clean up our act. And so by having, the, uh, by having these uh, hybrid airplanes out there, you can get them out there today rather than wait for another decade for a brand new airplane. So we can do something to help with this process already, and we're certainly not going to wait for it.